An American League battle, East versus Central. We'll see the Boston Red Sox as they play against the Chicago White Sox. Major League Baseball, right here on 2K Sports. Will they be able to limit the bat of Carlos Quinton? Well, we're going to find out. We're set to go. And we'll see the Chicago White Sox playing to an eager home crowd today. Welcome to Major League Baseball. Gary Thorne, John Crux, Steve Phillips. 2K Sports, this the final week of September. Starting pitcher John Danks and Steve as he faces these Boston hitters what will be the focus as a hitter when you face John Danks you have to be patient you know he's a guy that wants to expand the zone but he'll give up a walk and he'll give up a home run so hitters counts are critical lineup time courtesy of Pepsi here's a look it up and ball. it's Jacoby Ellsbury leading off the game the Red Sox taking Red a loss in their last outing they've got three Kobe more opportunities Ellsbury. now to take games against the White Sox. Well hit towards the middle. And that'll retire Ellsbury. Now a quick look for this game at the White Sox and how they are positioned in the field. So Steve, any individual standout? Joe Creedy has great reactions in the hot corner, Gary. He has great instincts to be able to move, glove the ball, and a strong, accurate arm. Back up. And that sets down Pedroia. And fans, there's more baseball coming this Friday. It'll be Kevin Euclid and the Boston Red Sox. They play host to the New York Yankees. That'll be a 7 p.m. start. Slider swung on and missed. 0 and 1. I saw the ball well last night, picking up two base hits in that game. Strike two, no balls, two strikes. Euclid's a dangerous 0-2 hitter, though. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. End of this inning with a nice piece of pitching work as he gets the K. Good defensive half inning there, no hits allowed. And the White Sox, their first chance to come. With the Chicago White Sox. And out on the mound, we've got Mike Hampton. He'll get the start for Boston. As he gets into this White Sox lineup, Steve, a little strategy. That's your left-hander, Mike Hampton. Out. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. And he's on. First batter up. That could be a good sign offensively. Stops at second. Two batters. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. John, who do we keep an eye on? Well, one of the more powerful swings you'll ever see. I mean, Jim Tomey's a big, big man, six foot three, over 250 pounds. So if you're a pitcher and you're facing Jim Tomey, you make a mistake, there's a pretty good chance, and don't be surprised or shocked that he hits it out of the park. Here's a look at how the Red Sox will line up defensively. So Steve, the thoughts on a fielder here. Uh, Kevin Euclid is so tough. He's a guy that's willing to get dirty to make the tough plays, but he's consistent because he never takes a pitch off. He's always focused. RBI chance goes to Paul Canerco. He's the league leader in ribbies. I think Ramirez has got to be thinking about moving in this situation. And Euclid will try and hold him close to the bag. That's in there. Should score the runner. Well, he saw a pitch that he really liked, and he did not miss it. A really nice job with nobody out, keeping this inning going and picking up that RBI. Great, great piece of hitting. So Carlos Quinton comes up here with two runners on. There's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. That one falls. That should bring Ramirez home. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. He's also a hit machine, leading the league in hits right now, swinging the bat well. Every time he puts it in play, he seems to find a hole. Here's the pitch. Catcher can't control it. Here's the pitch. Strike two. Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. They had two hits in the game last night, looking to add to that today and trying to contribute to his club success. Able to set him down there, chuck that one up as a strikeout for him. You have to be able to use your fastball in the major leagues, and this guy clearly 
can use that fastball throwing the low 90s. A very effective pitch. And Alex Rios up. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the lead. A smash to first, and it goes foul. There's a swing and a smash. And it's going to be Cameron. That's runners on the move. And Ramirez is home. Now that one. Well, he got a pitch to hit over the heart of the plate, right at the belt. He drove it, didn't get the base hit, but at least advanced the runners. He did get something out of it. Right? I'm sure he'd like to have that pitch back. That was when he, he really had a shot at driving. This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. And it's going to be Hermida. That's caught. Side is retired. Great offense early. First inning sees the first two runs of this game. The White Sox are leading two to nothing. Lead of the lineup coming to the plate. And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Cruck, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Leadoff hitter Victor Martinez. Hard grounded a short, fielded by Ramirez, and that'll retire Martinez. And it's Mike Cameron in the box now. He's coming off the game last night where he had two big hits, and looks like he's starting to get locked in a little bit. Nobody on base, one away. Danks gets set and delivers towards center field. And Cameron's got himself a single. That's going to bring up Adrian Beltre. Now we look at which teams have been getting on base the most. Brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. The Yankees second. The Orioles third. Fourth, the Red Sox. And the Mariners fifth. A great matchup right here. These two offenses, really scrappy battlers at the plate, falling off a pitcher's pitch, doing anything they can to get on base. Pitchers are going to have to keep coming in the zone to try to get out. Well, look for them to keep an eye and hold him close at first base here. He's fast. And they're going to try to get him in scoring position to see if they can't get back in the ballgame. And the one-two pitch from Danks. Hit sharply towards the hole. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. He takes this one-two pitch down in the zone. He's able to go down and get it. Get a good part of the bat on the ball and pick up the base hit. That's a tough pitch to hit when you're behind in the count. You just want contact, and he got it. And it's Jeremy Hermita. Well, good speed at first base right here. He can really run. Don't be surprised if we see him try to steal and get a second runner in scoring position. We'll see Canerco holding him in there. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And it's through. Hermita brings him home. Boston, what offensive production right now. Number 33. Good pitch down low, Steve, but a better at bat. Well, he did a real nice job going down in the swing to get that low ball to be able to pick up the hit. Got a feeling on this visit to the mound there's going to be a little deep chatter going on. I think a little heart to heart out there, a little challenge from the manager to see how he's doing. Also, probably talking a little bit of strategy. Thanks, gets set and delivers. Paints the lower outside corner, call strike one. Well, if he could throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pick. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Veritek to protect here. I had the hat trick last One, night, two. striking out three times in that ball game, and see if he can't make some adjustments today. You're Swing and a miss. Veritek out of there. That's a lot of movement there for a pitch at 87 miles per hour. Nice pitch on the inside corner. That gets him fishing a little bit. Well, he wanted that one. You could see it in his body language. He just got out by the pitcher on that one. Right. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. You can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. Right. It can be very effective. And it's 0-2. Marco Scudero, he's got to protect the plate on this next pitch. Well, the pitcher wow. has him right where he wants him, on the defensive. 
he could try to throw it out of the zone and get him to chase. Swing and a foul straight back. Yeah, Marcos good a row misses strike three. So they scratch across a run three hits and a couple left on. Boston now they're all lit up here at U.S. Cellular Field on this beautiful night for game. Joe 3D. Swing and a drive deep left center. This one to Ellsbury. And he meanders over to put it away. Look at the Eastern Division race now as the season winds down, courtesy of State Farm. Red Sox in first place, Yankees in second place. In the three hole, it's the Orioles, Jays in the four hole, and it's the Rays in the last slot. Uh, once again, he makes contact, line drive. Retiring Tommy, two away. This ball scorched right at the second baseman, but he showed quick reflexes to be able to make the play. And it's Johnny Damon now, right there in the top five in home runs. Swing and a line drive. And that one is in there, his second hit today. Oh, that brings Alexei Ramirez up. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Two outs and a man on first. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. The right center. That one in the alley. This could be two or more. The throw. And here's Damon going to try to score. He's in there. Wow, tremendous hustle all the way from first. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out. The guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. The pitch. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. And there's Ellsbury for the third out. So they score once on two hits, one man left. White Sox by two. There's a familiar face, Isaac Gian looking up. He's been happy with his offense being able to provide the two run advantage here. It's Jacoby Ellsbury to lead us off. And he steals off and he gets away with it. He's one of the league's best. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. Well, I tell you, with this kind of speed, he really can't impact the game. And it's only the pitchers and catchers really need to keep an eye on on the bases. To the left side. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. That'll bring up Dustin Pedroia. Well, anytime you can get on base with no outs to start an inning, you know that an extra base hit will probably score you. But he oh, and Ellsbury going to steal. Safe. He gets in there. Two Danks with some pitches to play with. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. Yeah. And that's that sound to Droy. Yeah, a little ways to go here in the season. The American League wild card. How's it looking? Well, let's take a look. Brought to you by State Farm. Mariners in first place. In second place, the Yankees. In the three hole, it's the Orioles. Fourth place, the Royals. It's the Blue Jays in fifth. And down at the bottom, the Texas Rangers. What a great race we have in the American League wild card right now. I know it's been interesting, but wild card teams have had great success in the postseason in the past. So one of these teams has a chance to really make a run to the World Series. Uh, Kevin Euclid, he whatever he was looking for, it wasn't that. Strike three. Number uh, K Camp shows 85 Victor miles per hour in the velocity and not much movement at all. Here's Victor Martinez now with the RBI hope. And he gets a walk a lot. The American League has him in the top five. Line drive. And that's going to do it. Canerco's there. And so a good ending for John Danks. And it'll be the way. For those of you just coming on board, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crump bringing you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton leading the league in home runs. Ball is swung on him a long way. Going way back. Still going back. Goodbye, home run. Putting a little padding on the lead. Solo shot up by three. White Sox 
lead expanded here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Number 15, Gordon. Empty bases, three outs to go here. Here's the first pitch. Grounder up by Beltre. And Beckham set down. Now let's take a peek at which teams lead in the batting average department, courtesy of State Farm. The White Sox, number one. Second, the Yankees. The Orioles, third. Fourth, the Red Sox. And we've got the Twins, who are number five. But when you're playing in a game... Swing and a drive, deep left center. This one to Ellsbury. And he gets over to take care of it. Number 12. It's going to be Przinski. Przinski. He's got a 266 career number against the Red Sox. He delivers up the middle. The diving stop, and he's up with it. Throw, got him. That is one heck of a play. So they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. White Sox up three. And a look at the skipper, Terry Francona. You can kind of tell he's figuring out just what he's going to have to do here to try and overcome that three-run deficit. First pitch is a cutter. Looked at 0-1. And you can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. A swing and a foul off to the right side. That is a called strike three to Mike Cameron. He's gone. He's got some real giddy up on the fastball today. It's got that good late action in the zone. That's his fifth strikeout on the fastball. First one to Beltre. Here's the pitch. On the ground to short. And Ramirez fields the ball. So Beltre is set down. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings of the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners, this lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient, they let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. Fresh count on Hermida. Here it comes. That's a good pitch from Danks. It's in there. You can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. And that's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Hermida to protect. And Przinsky calls for the pitch. Ground ball to short. And Ramirez fields the ball. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. Seven pitches and it's done. That's how you save your arm and go deep into a game. The White Sox still ahead. We'll get a look at that leadoff hitter due up here in the inning. Leading it off, Joe Creedy. He flew out his last time up. Number 29, Joe Creedy. He deals. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0-1. 236 career average against the Red Sox. Strike two. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Greedy. He'll lean in on that zone now. Well, for a ball that had that type of movement on it, that slider had surprising velocity, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. He swung late. Add one more to that lead. Fly ball out of here, four up. Well, another home run right there. That's two now, so really this, this lineup looking like they're getting very comfortable. White Sox lead expanding here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Number 27, Jim. No outs and nobody on. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. Hot shot towards the hole. One away. State Fire takes a look at our leaders and extra base hits in the lead. And it's Johnny Damon. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in runs scored, top five. Takes a swing at that fastball, can't connect on one. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. Strike two. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. I saw the ball well last night, picking up two base hits in that game. And so Damon retired. We're seeing some late September baseball now, looking at the State Farm standing board. This is how the Central Division stands. First place, the White Sox. In second place, it's the Royals. 
In third, the Indians. Twins are fourth. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. In the tough AL Central, we all thought the White Sox would finish down on the... Ball is blasted. High, deep center field. Way back there. Goodbye, home run. Add one more to that lead. Solo, big fly ball up by five. Uh, Gary, this offense has just been in control right here. Extending the lead, going to make it much more difficult to catch. Towards the middle. And it gets down. That's hit number two, making good contact. That's going to bring Carlos Quentin up. Well, that's ten hits right now in this ball game for him. And, you know, you're going to have to wonder how much longer the manager's going to stick with this guy. He's the league leader in hits. First pitch to Quentin. Swung and a fly ball. And it's going to be Hermida. And that one's put away to retire the side. So they get the long ball working as they have two solo homers in this half of the inning. The White Sox, they've got a commanding five-run lead. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. Things have been going right for him. His ball club today, uh, last half inning, they proved productive. Now they're looking to expand that lead. And it's Jason Veritek now. Danks gets set and delivers. Line drive. Beckham able to pull that one in. And we're going to see Scudero here. Struck out swinging last time. Base is empty with one away. And the first pitch. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch. 0 1. Now 0 2. Danks with some pitches to play with. Now that he's established the strike zone down and in, he can elevate a pitch or go with something soft away from the hitter. Straight away left. Damon. And he's able to put it away. We talk about settling in. How about retiring eight hitters in a row? I think he settled in. And Jacoby Ellsbury to bat. One of the best base dealers in the AL. And he starts Ellsbury out. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. Here's the pitch. Strike two. Strike two at the knees. Nothing in two. And you can hit your spot with that kind of movement down and into the hitter. You're way ahead of the game. Ball one. Oh, tough one to lay off right there. That fastball. One and two. It's your turn, White Sox. It's hit foul by Ellsbury. Ellsbury fouls off another. Well, he's going to have to keep this same approach if he wants this at bat to go on. That's a pitch right there that possibly could have put in play. Oh. He's lucky, though, he fouled it off because you can't do a lot with that high pitch. Oh. And he fouls off another one. And he fouls another one off. But what you like here is neither one of these guys are giving in. The eighth pitch of the at bat, the pitcher. Hit on the ground over to shortstop. Fielded by Ramirez. Throws to first in time. That's three down. No scoring here. And if you just joined our broadcast, great time to be on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball. I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crump. And Beckham's in the box. He has not hit well in this particular matchup. Only 136 against the Red Sox. And doing the pitching, it'll be Mark Hendrickson. As they make the pitching swap. One out. And Alex Rios at the plate. And one of the league's most prolific hitters in the top five. And he starts Rios out. Cut fastball swung on and missed. 0-1. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out. And a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. And it's through into the gap. Should be extra bases. He'll hold there at second base. Crediting with a double. Number 12, A.J. 
Jay Brzezinski. Well, this pitch right here catches way too much of the plate, and he absolutely demolishes it. Let's see what they want to do here with one out and a base open. It's going to be Brzezinski, and he's in the top ten in the league and runs. On the way. Here's one hit very well deep. And it's going to be Cameron as he just strolls over for that out. And now a chance to see where the Red Sox sit in the American League range. Second batting average with runners in scoring position. Second in ERA. And this power pitching staff ranks number two in strikeouts. Quality stuff getting a lot of swings and misses. A line drive towards short. And Creedy's got himself a single. That's going to bring up Jim Tomey. Two hits the last game, and you can see he was getting a little confidence as that game went on, and he's carrying it into this one with another good start. What a year for him. Top five in homer. Swing and a miss for strike one. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. And that's a strike. Tomei is going to have to hit with a little less of a cut here. That's just a great pitch right there. I mean, that's the hardest pitch for a hitter to try to stay back on. That's why he was out in front of that one. No runs on a couple of hits and two left on. The White Sox six, Boston one. And Dustin Pedroia to lead it off. Now he's coming off of a game last night, a little bit disappointing. A couple of strikeouts, and he just expanded the strike zone and chased pitches off the plate. Fresh count on Pedroia. Here it comes. Oh. Fastball just misses. 1 and 0. Over his career, 2 for 12 record against Stanks. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. And they get him at first base. Good hustle by the pitcher to get over there. Now, great work by the pitcher there. He normally not called the bottom play first base. He does a nice job completing the task and getting the out. And here's Kevin Euclid. 0 for 2 thus far. The pitch. Strikes him off with one at the knees for a strike. And you can throw the ball down to the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. Strike, strike two. two. No balls. Two strikes. Euclid's a dangerous 0-2 hitter, though. Oh. Still 0-2. Swung ground ball to short, and Ramirez feels the ball, and Euclidus retired. Going around the league, the teams keeping their ERA down, courtesy of State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. The Red Sox second. Third, the Mariners. Yankees fourth. And at number five, it's the Angels. Well, this has the potential to be a very low-scoring game. Two of the best pitching teams in all of baseball. I tell you what, this is when execute hit sharply towards the hole. Throws on to first side is retired. And nothing across here in this half of the inning. The White Sox. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. One of the best batting averages in the league. Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. Swings a little late that time. Strike one. Pitch on the way. Strike two. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. The batter was obviously looking for something oh, else. You see how way out in front he was on that swing. Now Martinez spots the pitch. Johnny Damon on a swing and a miss. That's going to be strike three. A good pitch right at the knees there. He swung right over the top of it and just couldn't put it in play. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. He homered earlier in the ballgame. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. He's looking a little confused out there right now. He just swung at a pitch that was in the dirt. There's a swing towards the hole. And it gets down. Hit after hit. They just keep on coming. He's got four today. And that'll bring up Paul Panerko. Oh, Alexi Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Second doubles, third in batting average. He's also ranked 
third in hits in the league right now. A guy that makes so much contact, that ability to put it in play, such a good contact hit. And he starts Canerco out. It's strike one, can't make contact on the fastball. 271 is lifetime average off Boston. Swing sits this one pretty well, deep right center. And it's going to be Cameron. And it's off the wall in right center. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Well, anytime you're a hitter and you can get three hits in a game, you're going to see that average start creeping up to where you want it to be. And he's on now with one out. And it's Carlos Quinton. Swings, hits this one very high in the air. A soaring drive. Gone. Goodbye. A three run shot. the second time today he got his pitch and absolutely drove it out of the park. This could be a home run day. It looks as though they're able to lift that ball in their at bats. Now they're just so locked in. Seeing the ball it looks like a beach ball. Now they have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. Base is empty. One out. And the first pitch. This one swung on and driven hard. And he grabs it in his truck. And with this break in the action, let's take a look at the leaders in slugging brought to you by State Farm. Well, this is a list of hitters that strikes fear in the opposition pitching. They have to because they know with one swing of the bat, they can change the score of the game. And Alex Rios up. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. Here's the delivery. Here's a swing and a ball hit high into the air, deep into right field. Tell it goodbye. They add to the lead. Man, what a big day these guys are having. Well, this is a pitcher's worst nightmare right here. Throwing it and having it crushed every single time it's over the floor. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. And another one. It's contagious. And they can't cut it off. It'll roll to the wall. So there are two men down here, but they do get a man in scoring position. Uh, oh, one mistake right here. He throws it over the heart of the plate. He pays for it. And Hideki Okajima is the pitcher. He'll be the reliever for the Red Sox. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think in score? Sometimes for pitchers, it's the stuff, and sometimes it's deception. With Hideki Okajima, you'll see the deception in his delivery. He'll release the ball, and his head will be looking down to the ground. He won't even be looking at the catcher. That has to be intimidating for a hitter. Hit in the air to left center. This one into the gap, rolling towards the wall. All the way to the wall. And Pierzynski comes in. Now batting. But a big two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. This man's doing what he has to do to help his team win. Two outs and a runner on second. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. Fly ball deep left, but it'll end up in the seats foul. Tomei fouls it off again. Okajima with the pitch. Swing and a rocket toward short. Throws to first side is retired. Not before they tally five times thanks to two home runs in the inning. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. And for those of you catching up with us, hi, I'm Gary Thorne along with John Crook and Steve Phillips bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Mike Cameron to lead it off. Not looking last time. Cameron gets set. Here's the first pitch. And that misses for a ball. Now Gary with this big lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes. Get out right now. In for a strike, one and one. 
Now that he's gotten the four-seamer down and in, look for him to go outside now. Good time to call for that changeup. One and two. Here it comes. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out, one down. With two strikes, the hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. First one to Beltray. Here's the pitch. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. Okay, one out here in the seventh inning. I mean, you have to like the way this is going. They're looking. Swung on and hit. It's going to be Quentin. Play is made. Let's take a look at the teams leading the league in home runs on our State Farm leaderboard. The White Sox, number one. Second, the Blue Jays. Third spot, the Rangers. Red Sox, fourth. And at number five, it's the Angels. Well, if you bought a ticket to come watch this game, let's hope you bought one in fair territory somewhere in the outfield because these two teams can wow. really hit the long ball. Line towards third and foul. No balls, one strike. Here's Dank. Called strike outside corner. Quickly in the hole now, 0-2. Well, it's getting late right now. Two outs here in the seventh inning, and, you know, they're down by a You're bunch out. of runs. They need to start to get something going right here, Gary. Well, that half inning uh, came to a close. A strikeout ended it. So John Danks gets him three up, three down. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. Left fielder, number 18, Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. Good pitch from Okajima. Swung on and missed. Well, that two-seam fastball down and away. It's awfully tough to center that ball and make solid contact. That time, he couldn't even make any contact. Damon will foul that one away. Swing and a line to left. And Ellsbury brings that one in. One away. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. A couple of RBIs thus far. A uh, complete game here for him. I mean, you talk about the RBI, the homers, and this guy's doing everything today. And here's the first one. And he swings and hits this one foul. Okajima sends the 0-1 pitch. And it's going to be Hermida. Realms over, puts it away. And it's Paul Canerco now. Three for four thus far. Base is empty and two down. And he starts Canerco out. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. Nobody left on base. No runs are hit. Camera, we get a look at Terry Francona. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. There's a swing and a line drive, and that'll put Veritek on first. Now batting for the Boston Red Sox. Well, a great job right there by the first hitter in this inning to get on base. And you know, a lot of big innings are started with that first guy getting on. You have one or two big innings in a game, and that can be the difference in the outcome. Line drive. That's one. But he'll hang on to that, so they will get one. They get the lead runner at second base, but I think they would have liked to have gotten two right there. And he starts Ellsbury out. And he lays one down here. Picked up by Przinski. And he's on board. Close play, but he beats it out. That's a great situation for some offense. Two on, and here's Dustin Pedroia to hit. Grounded out his last time up. Ball Change up just misses. One and oh. You know, Gary, with one out right here, they still have time in this inning. To that one swung on its line. And it's caught by Ramirez. That keeps those runners at first and second. Two out and two on base for Kevin Euclid. Hasn't had much success yet in this game. He's hoping to get something this time. Here's the first delivery to Euclid. A swing line to left center. And it's in there. Oh, that one did not come too soon for him. He's had a very tough offensive day. And they score him. Boston, what offensive production right now. 
On the ground to short. Fielded by Ramirez. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. So they scratch across a run. Three hits and a couple left on. Boston showing some life. They try to inch their way back. For those of you just joining in, I'm Gary Thorne along with John Cruck and Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. He's already homered twice in this one. Well, Gary, they're having a big offensive day. I think that's pretty obvious, but clearly one of the major hit up the middle. And it gets through for him again. I guess you expect that today. He's got a four-hit game. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham up. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. He's also a hit machine leading the league in hits right now. Swinging the bat well. Every time he puts it in play, he seems to find a hole. There's a swing and a high drive down the left field line. Two run homer just adds to a terrific Arizona. hitting game they've had. The and Rios is batting. Number 51, Alex. No outs Rios. and nobody on base. First pitch to him. Good pitch from Okajima. Swung on and missed. Steve, this lineup uh, combined with their pitching right now in a position to be unstoppable. Well, no question about it. In the other dugout, the manager's got to be thinking, what am I going to do with this pitcher? Should I get him out of it? Fastball swung out and missed, struck him out, one away. Now we're going to get a chance, Gary, to see the four seam fastball in KK. In there for a strike. Okajima sends the 0-1 pitch, and that'll put Brzezinski on first. And that's going to bring Joe Greedy up. Brought to you by State Farm. A look at the pitching staffs responsible for sending the most hitters back to the caves. The Yankees, number one. The Indians, second. Third, the Mariners. Fourth, the Twins. And it's the Red Sox, number five. Well, these are tough pitching staffs to have to face as hitters because you know you're going to get power stuff and they're difficult to put the ball in play. So you need to take advantage of the base hits that you do get. Call strike to even things at one. Well, the change up right there hit a good spot. You want to keep that down in the zone so even if they swing at it, it stays in the ballpark. Strike, strike two with a swing and a miss on a fastball. And here's Okajima's 1 2 offering. Swing and a miss on the splitter. Out number two. Well, this is where you want to go with two strikes on the hitter. You want to go down out of the zone. He swings through it, couldn't make contact with that one. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. Good pitch from Okajima. Swung on and missed. He delivers. And that's a strike. Tomei's going to have to hit. With a little less of a cut here. Credit the catcher on that one. That's a good low target setting up, and he hit the target. Good execution. Throws on to first side is retired. Well, they add a couple more runs here and extend their lead even further. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Again, taking a look at you right there. He has to be very pleased right now, riding this one up. Cameron gets set. Here's the first pitch. That one is hit well. Quentin's there. And in there, at least for a single as it gets down. That's going to bring up Adrian Beltre. Well, this guy's always a threat to go. He steals a lot of bases, so they're going to have to keep a close eye on him, and maybe they'll make a mistake to the hitter paying attention to the rock. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. Well, I think right now, offensively, you've got to start getting base runners. Get as many as you can. I mean, you're down a ton, so you don't need big hits. You don't need home runs. You need base runners. Here's the pitch. Oh! It's hit foul by Beltre. Oh! 
another foul ball. Beltre working hard in this at bat. Well, the pitcher did exactly what he wanted to do on that 0 2 count. He wanted him to swing the bat, and he did, but he just fouled it off. I mean, a great piece of hitting. Well, I was just having some difficulty right now trying to make up this ground. And, and obviously, they've got a hill still to climb. And running out of time right now, only two outs remaining. So they've got to get something going and keep it going. Swung on a fly ball down the left field line. Base hit, maybe two. They'll try and bring Cameron to the plate. And he scores. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. Runner at first with one down. First pitch on the way, Veritek. Rios will field. Two retired here. Now down to their final out right here, Gary. So, I mean, it looked pretty dire at this point. And, you know, but listen, plenty of things have happened. They've got to get base runners, though. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an oh. outstanding pitch. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. And he takes off for second. So they can't make the play. But Gary, to make the error right there, you just don't want to do that. It's just not good baseball. Takes a swing at that fastball. Doesn't get to it. One and two. The one-two on its way. Swung on grounder. This might be it. And here's Hermida going to try to score. And he's aboard easily. And the run gets in. Fielder, number two, Jacoby Ellsberg. He takes this one-two pitch down in the zone. He's able to go down and get it. Get a good part of the bat on the ball and pick up the base hit. That's a tough pitch to hit. When you're behind in the count, you just want contact. And he got it. There's a strike at the knees on one. We're moving a little bit closer right now, Gary. It's what they need to do if they're going to try to come back in this game. Get base runners on. And they picked up two. And it's 0-2. Ellsbury cut it down for Tech. Here's a fly ball. Could be it. And it's going to be Quentin. And you just saw it, folks. That's going to be the last play of this game. White Sox win this in a lopsided victory. A dominating performance, Gary. Now we take a look at our player who is clearly instrumental in this contest, our Pepsi clutch performer. Definitely a difference maker in this one, John Danks. But you know, Gary, there's no way you can win baseball games without great starting pitching. And he came through in this one with the most important performance of the game. And that's basically the definition of what it takes to be the Pepsi clutch performer of the game. Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Uh, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings. But the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. And until next time, this is Gary Thorne along with John Crock and Steve Phillips. We'll catch you at the yard.